2. Identify each half reaction below as either oxidation or reduction. And then we have NO3 minus, which will yield NO. Okay, so whenever we're dealing with oxidation or reduction, reduction or oxidation, or if they say something like redox, redox, R-E-D-O-X is literally just the word reduction and oxidation smushed together. We always think of the mnemonic, Leo the lion says, grr. It's just an easy way to remember what's going on with oxidation and reduction. So Leo is always when you lose electrons, you're always becoming oxidized or undergoing oxidation. So lose electrons, oxidation. That just means that you're becoming more positive from left to right of the equation. The Ger side is the opposite. Gain of electrons is always reduction. And if you're gaining electrons, remember electrons are negative. So you're going to become more negative. The easiest way though is to just see where your electrons are if you have a half reaction. Anytime that you have electrons on the product side, that's always oxidation. On the flip side, anytime that you have electrons on your reactant side, that's reduction. But where's the electrons? I don't see them, right? I don't see any electrons plus E negative on the right side or plus E negative on the left side. So we have to make them. Now there's two ways that you could do this type of uh, finding out where the electrons are. You can take this half reaction and balance it as if you were doing an acidic solution question where you balance all the elements first, right? That aren't hydrogen and oxygen. Then you balance the oxygen, then you balance the hydrogen. And that just takes too much time. I'm going to show you a little quick way because whether you do it in acidic conditions or whether you look at the individual elements, you'll get the same answer. Now, the key to doing it this quicker way is to know that, remember, oxygen only has one charge, right? Technically, it has two, but 99% of the time, oxygen is always a negative two charge, right? So just keep that in mind. Oxygen likes to be a negative two. It's in group 6A or 16 on the periodic table, so it's under the group that has the negative two charge. So if oxygen is going to be a negative two here and a negative two here, there was no electrons that were lost or gained because the oxygen is the same state. I'm mean, not state, but this, the same charge. It's a negative two, which means that the nitrogen is the one that is going to change charges. So that's the key here. We just have to find out what the charges of the nitrogen is, and then we can see where the electrons are going to go. It doesn't matter which one you start with. Let's just start with the NO here, right? So for nitrogen and oxygen, remember, no. <laughs> remember, you can always just look at your subscripts and crisscross those up to help you, right? You have one nitrogen, you have one oxygen. So this one crisscrossed up telling me that oxygen was a negative one. And this one crisscrossed up telling me that the nitrogen was a plus one. So that's what we have right now. We have N being a plus one and oxygen being a negative one. But remember what we just said, oxygen likes to be a negative two. So I have to change this number. And we could totally do that, right? I could just times this by two. But whatever you do to that side, you have to do it to this side. So in this case, the nitrogen is going to be a plus two. Okay, so now we know that I have an N plus two on this side. Now let's just see what that nitrogen is going to be on the other side. So maybe I'll say NO3. Now this one is a little different because you have an overall charge. Now in this case, we already know what the oxygen is going to be, right? The oxygen is going to be a negative two charge. But we don't know what that nitrogen is. So maybe we'll just label it as X. Use these two elements together to equal to the total charge, right? If I had one nitrogen and one times that 
um, state, not state, but charge, plus the oxygen. So there was three oxygens, each had a negative two charge. This will have to equal the total charge of being a negative one. So now I can just solve for x, right? x minus six equals a negative one, because three times a negative two is a negative one. Throw the six on over, and now you have your charge. x was a plus five, which means that the nitrogen is now a plus five. N was a plus five. Now we have the charges. Maybe I'll bring this over. Now we have the charges to help us out. Where is the electrons going to be? Well, I have a plus five on this side and I have a plus two. Keep in mind when you add electrons, since they're negative, you can only bring numbers down. You can never go up. So the idea is that whenever you wanna add your electrons, whether it's on this side or whether it's on this side, you always add it to the more positive of your two charges. So in this case, I will add it on this side because five is greater than a two. So just by putting your electrons here, we kinda of already know the answer, but let's just make it uh, better, right? From five down to a two, we just need to add three electrons. And now since your electrons are on the reactant side, you gained the electrons, right? Because the electrons are on the reactant side. So this is reduction. And there you go. And if you wanted to balance it in the acidic uh, conditions, you would also see that you would had to add your electrons to this side as well. So both answers would basically be correct. Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you all are having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.